Hi everybody, this is Vicki of Cruising Princess Cruise Lines with Vicki. Today we have the pleasure of talking to my dear, dear friends Barb and Craig who have just come off a Alaskan cruise with a land portion that was at the beginning of that cruise. So for this podcast today, we're going to talk to them about their seven-day land portion of their cruise before boarding the Coral Princess. So um, we're back today talking about Alaska, and I'm with my good friends Barb and Craig. Um, thanks. Welcome to my first cruise interview. <laughs> I know I'm excited. So we've known Barb and Craig for quite a while. So how? First of all, where are you from? We're from the Napa Valley in California, mm. and a beautiful country. But it's always nice to get away on a cruise. And how did we meet the three of us? Well, the four of us. This include Bernie and that. Well, we got started uh, in Cruise Critic um, on the, uh, let's see, it was a Panama Canal cruise uh, several years ago and uh, just had an absolute blast and continue to enjoy one another's company ever since. Yeah. Anything to add, Barb? <laughs> no, it's been one of the best friendships we've made on cruising, though. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So you did, you just pointed out to me this morning, you did the Connoisseur Deluxe Escorted 15-night cruise tour. Boy, that's a mouthful. <laughs> yes, it is, but it was a heck of an experience. Yeah. Recommend it uh, thoroughly. And so tell me, why did you pick this itinerary, first of all? We've been to uh, Alaska four times. Uh, this will be our fourth time uh, uh, on a cruise, but our first time on, a, uh, on the, uh, uh, the land side. We've never seen the interior of Alaska, and uh, it was really a treat. It was it was it was the main reason we did the Alaska cruise again is because we were doing it with the tour the land tour that was the reason we did it and um, I think one of the main reasons we chose this itinerary was because it was fully escorted we had you know all the meals and everything were included and some of the tours were included but the biggest thing was that it had three nights at the Kenai Peninsula which that was one of our our big goals was getting to Kenai so mm -hmm. and it was beautiful it was everything we expected it would be so let's um so you, I know you were here in Vancouver uh, and you so tell me how did you get to the start of this trip from here in Vancouver we uh, we flew uh, via Seattle to uh, to uh, Fairbanks I should say and then uh, that's where the uh, that's where the tour started we had a a, a night at the Fairbanks uh, lodge and then moved on to uh, uh, Denali mm -hmm. where we spent two nights uh, one night at the McKinley Lodge and then three nights at the Kenai Lodge uh, the, two nights in Fairbanks mm -hmm. but it was uh, all of the lodges were yeah. very nice but as Barb said the one in Kenai was really uh, our clear-cut favorite so when you flew, did like as soon as they met you at the airport, did everything get taken care of then? Like oh yes, the, the princess handled everything. We yeah. got the uh, uh, they picked up uh, our bags from us. We got them from the carousels at the airport, and they took it, loaded it on the bus. And that's one of the nice things about the escorted tour is that each time we moved um, between hotels or lodges, I should say, um, you put your bags out first thing in the morning. Uh, Princess staff came by, picked them up, put them uh, on a transportation, and they showed up at your room at the next location. And it was just easy peasy. Wow. Plus, in, in Fairbanks, it was a bit unique. Uh, that uh, since that was the first lodge, they gave us the opportunity to uh, have bags shipped directly to the ship. Uh, and that was really nice because a lot of the uh, nicer clothes that you would wear to dinner, uh, we didn't need them uh, uh, during the land portion because uh, it was a lot, uh, it was really casual there. Oh, that's a great tip. So, yeah, you could like basically say, I don't need this whole suitcase and it'll meet you at the ship. Yep. Ex exactly right. Oh, wow. Out of, we had three bags, one of which we, we sent directly to the ship. Mm. So, you're, how far was the airport to your first hotel in Fairbanks? Cause is the Fairbanks a big city or how big is that? It's pretty good size. It's reasonably good size. The airport is pretty small. The hotel uh, was uh, probably a, a 10 minute yeah, coach minutes. ride mm -hmm. from, the, uh, from the airport. It was, it was quite close. Mm, okay. But Fairbanks is good size. Uh, 
a lot of your, your typical shopping and, you know, big stores, et cetera. Okay, so if you needed to get some supplies when you landed, it would be easy to get to? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, if I remember, there was a Fred Meyer, uh, a large uh, department store type, and it was, it was within walking distance. Oh, it was a bit good. of a walk, but it was, yeah, it was easily done. Okay, well, that's good. That's good to know because I'm sure people might need something like that. Um, what was the accommodations like at Fairbanks then? Fairbanks Lodge was kind of a typical uh, okay. hotel. Um, the, the rooms were nicely appointed and uh, the, the meals were great, but uh, it, was, it was your basic hotel. But nice, uh, good service, uh, nicely done. And we started off with a welcome dinner where we all got together. There was two busloads of us doing this tour. So we all got together the first night. We met our hosts. And then we kind of split into our groups. And there was only 26 of us on a 50-passenger bus. So we had plenty of room on the bus. It was really nice. Was so you're saying when there's two, two groups of two buses of people, you guys didn't like actually travel the whole time together? You were we were together the whole time, but we, they kind of kept us separated. I mean, okay. we would have our dinners together. They would have oh, their dinners okay. together. But oh. it was but there, there was definitely the 50 of us that were all traveling, yeah, traveling together, doing the same tour. One of the big things about the escorted tour is that um, so many things were included. Uh, we had a tour director who took care of it, ensuring that we got uh, where we were supposed to be at the time we were supposed to be. Um, and took care of all of the details um, as far as meals go. The various restaurants at the Princess Lodges um, on the escorted, our meals were covered and we simply presented a voucher and uh, that took care of the meal. Uh, but many people chose to do the uh, other tours with Princess and they simply paid as they went for their, their meals and other things. Uh, the tours, they could choose whatever tours they wanted. Uh, we chose to, to kind of let, let Princess take care of the details and uh, just lead us along. So if people didn't have the food included, how were the prices on the, you know, because we hear always that Alaska is really expensive, so how were... I don't think it was any more expensive than anywhere else in Alaska. Mm -hmm. I really think the prices were, were fair. I mean, they're high compared to what we're used to, mm -hmm. but they were fairly... But the you're, end of you're in Alaska. Great. The okay. food was great. Was and really so you had vouchers, so you could have pretty much whatever you wanted mm -hmm. on the menu and everything That's would be included, just like if you went to the dining room on the yes. ship? Yeah. The prices were such that they actually gave you a, there was a limit. It's just you didn't see it. Okay. But if you so went out You have crab legs all night long? Yeah, you didn't want to be doing that. Okay. The, your, your server was knowledgeable in terms of what the voucher's worth was. And uh, if you started going hog wild and going way over the limit, the, they, they would let you know. And alcohol was additional. Yeah, that okay. did not so include it's similar alcohol. to Prince if right. you're on board. Oh, yes, that very good. similar. Oh, that's good. One last thing to worry about, too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And our tour guide, when we got to each facility, they gave us a packet that had our, all of our tickets for the vouchers and everything. So each, we didn't have to get them all at the very beginning and try and hang on to them. It was literally at each facility he gave us another packet wow. that had all the stuff we needed. And of real importance, that packet also included our room keys. So there was absolutely no check-in, no, check no nothing. You really simply nice. walked off the bus with your little packet in hand. Straight to your you room. went straight to your room. Your luggage was already there. You, we never interacted with the front desk at all. Oh, sounds lovely because that is a pain. It is. Checking in, checking out, making sure everything. Oh, that's great. Didn't have to do any of that. And there's no bills to worry about, and so there was uh, nothing to do. And also when we did a tour, our tour guide, um, he was in charge of tipping any tour guides that we had, local tour guides. And he says that he covers them well, and then obviously we tipped him at the end. Oh, okay. But that included all our tips, so that was pretty nice. Oh, that. So let me get get this straight. I know we talked about this yesterday, but you had a tour coordinator. So this is the guy on the bus, correct. Helping you, handing out your packets, making sure everybody's happy, and he was with you the whole time. Yes, that's correct. And so then you went to each place. You had guides that would guide you at the locations mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. sites. Oh, okay. That makes it really nice and easy. So you always were dealing just with one person if you had an yep. issue. That's correct. Okay. And we did have an issue. We ended up having to go to the ER out of Kenai, 
and Princess was amazing. They paid for our transportation down there. It was about an hour drive. Each way? Um, each way, yeah. And the lady sat with us at the hospital and waited. She took us to the pharmacy to get prescriptions afterwards. We were very, very well taken care of. And there was no charge for that service, which I was amazed. I wow. Was amazed um, and do you remember the name of this person? Just to give him a big shout out. Oh, big know? shout out. Yes, Patrick Fitzgerald. A absolute Dr. fabulous. Thoroughly enjoyed Patrick's work. He was just, uh, he was amazing, very uh, attentive. Uh, he was he had his cell phone turned on 24-7 and invited people to call him at any hour of the day or night if there was anything at all that he could do for them. Wow, that's amazing. I don't know. He even when, I, when we got back from the emergency room, he came over with the menu for the night. You know, we had vouchers for dinner that night, and he came over with the menu, took our vouchers, took our orders, went over and got it, and brought it back to our, our room. So that was service above and beyond. It was very nice. So let's talk, okay, so you're in Fairbanks and you're at your hotel and mm -hmm. so your first day, where you have three days in, or Fairbanks, Denali? Two days in Fairbanks. Fairbanks. Okay, so what did you do there? Our uh, pre-set uh, tours, uh, we went out to, uh, to do some gold panning. Yeah, and, uh, okay. and saw one of the original uh, dredging machines that uh, that were used to uh, uh, to do mass uh, gold mining in early Alaskan days, and that it was it was quite an operation. Uh, our gold panning experience netted us a gold mm -hmm. worth a whopping twenty two dollars. Wow, that's pretty good. Oh yes, that's some, between both of us though. Some some people on the uh, uh, on our tour they they got three or four times that much. Wow, you got a new career in your retirement. Mm, no, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, that was a lot of work for a, a few little flecks of gold. <laughs> They also took us on a little bit of tour of the Alaska pipeline and explained a lot of the pipeline and you know how it was built you know back in the 60s when in fact the guys asked did, did any of us have a friend or family member that worked the pipeline and he says he's never ever asked a group of people that didn't know somebody mm -hmm. that worked the pipeline yeah you know, that was so. a big big job maker that kind and it of was oh that's and and anything else you did in Fairbanks we did a, uh, a river, river cruise ride. on a, uh, a, river. a, a the old paddle wheeler, oh. and that was pretty cool. You went way down the uh, down the river, and uh, along the way, there was some magnificent sights, a lot of explanation of old time Alaska. We stopped at a uh, a little uh, camp where they had set up displays uh, showing uh, some of the. Uh, uh, the ways that the uh, the old Alaskans lived, and the way they uh, they, they got their, their skins for their clothing, and it was uh, it was a it was really cool. Well they also, done. They also stopped at a mushing a dog's um, kennel, kennel. Mm -hmm. and they gave us a demonstration of what they do when there's no snow. How they pull a little four wheel ATV, uh, ATV um, but those dogs. Are crazy. They are so hyper. It was amazing. It was an amazing <laughs> sight. <laughs> so, what was your next stop then? Denali. Next stop was Denali. Um, beautiful lodge. There's actually uh, Denali was the the first Princess Lodge to be constructed, but uh, because of the popularity, they, it has continued to expand. Uh, our rooms were in the the new section. Uh, a little bit higher uh, above the the old section of the lodge. Really, very nice location. Uh, again, service was impeccable. We had a uh, um, there was a little pizza parlor that was right next to the hotel. The pizza and beer were great. <laughs> <laughs> but then, on a after a, a nice day like that, there's nothing like pizza and beer. Yeah. Was there anything around this lodge other than this pizza place? Like, oh, oh yes, yeah. the, the hotel had their own restaurant, and then uh, right across the street there were a variety of little places. There was a salmon bake place and oh. uh, a couple of your, your traditional chains. Uh, there was a subway and a few other things. Okay. So. Yeah, it's just good to know for people who have never been there and they're planning what they, what they will have up there. Okay. And what did you do when you were in Denali? We started with a, uh, a four-wheel drive uh, backcountry adventure. Um, 
Through Princess. It, again, this was part of, uh, this was a Princess tour, but it was not included in the package. Yeah, I think so. um, it actually departed from Healy, which is about 11 miles north of uh, Denali Lodge. Um, and this this young man, I th think he was in his early 20s, took us um, uh, this amazing adventure in uh, the, there were several, I think it was four Jeep Wranglers. Uh, and we we went through stream beds and we went through trails that were hardly identifiable as trails. But he's been exploring the area there for uh, a number of years and really knows his stuff. It was uh, it was quite a hoot uh, going through these uh, the stream beds, and it wasn't just crossing streams. He actually drove down the the stream beds in the water, and uh, you thought, how am I ever going to get through this? And somehow you did. Did it make you feel like you were 20 again? Yeah, that's a long time ago, <laughs> but yes, yes. It, uh, you start out a little apprehensively, but then you kind of get into it, and it's you know it's it's almost like the bumper cars at Disneyland. <laughs> were, you, were you the one driving? Yeah. All right. Good. Oh. But it was a a great experience. You see a lot of the the backcountry that you'd never otherwise see, and they, they we stopped at a uh, a small clearing where the uh, the company uh, the tour company had a little. Uh, uh, lean to set up, and uh, one of the folks was there. Uh, it made some stew and some uh, fry bread and uh, coffee. And and it was just, it was a real nice spot before we took off again. Mm. Our big problem was that we were having so much fun that uh, our, our driver guide uh, decided he wanted to take us farther out than the tour normally goes. And so we ended up uh, going even further out, turned around came back and on our way back into civilization, uh, we encountered a, a, a group of uh, ATVs that were having, uh, they had problems because uh, there was a, a, a flat tire and they lacked the tools to, to change it. And so we ended up uh, staying at that location for better part of an hour and uh, while the uh, our driver uh, went out and helped them get the tire changed. Hmm. Of course, this allowed us to get back to, to Denali Lodge well after the restaurants had closed for dinner. We had no dinner that night. We had popcorn. <laughs> and some caramel colored uh, liquid from a, from a square bottle. <laughs> Jack Daniels. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm like, so Jack Daniels and popcorn. Jack Daniels and popcorn. Mm, good. That's too funny. Oh, okay. So that was your time at Mick. So were you not on some kind of bus tour? The, we did, the next day. The next day we okay. did a, a, a tour that came with the package that took us down into Denali Park. And uh, we went probably 60 miles into the park and eight had hours. some absolutely eight hours, in, wow. yeah. incredible views of, of Denali. It's a, a rarity to, to have you know, clear views of the mountain. It usually makes its own weather system and there are uh, clouds that, uh, at the top of it most of the time. They said this year that only 10% of the people visiting Denali were able to see the mountain. And we saw it beautifully two days. Uh, you know, both days in Denali, we saw it perfectly beautiful, as clear skies. Now, when we got to McKinley the next day, it was totally clouded. It was, it was lost. There was no mountain up there, even though they told us it was there. <laughs> but we did get to see it, so it was awesome. Oh. I should mention that the, uh, the trip from uh, Fairbanks to Denali for this particular tour was by coach. By coach. So all 50 of you were together then? In two buses. In two, two buses. buses. Yes, yeah, I don't think it would accommodate them. Yeah. Right. But uh, uh, that's kind of important because the uh, as we left uh, Denali to head down to uh, Talkeetna, which is uh, the area where McKinley is located, um, we actually did that one by rail. Really? Yeah, that so, was fun. The, the ads that we had seen had led me to believe that the entire journey would be by rail, but it is not. They, they split it up and sometimes you know, one leg will be by coach and one will be by rail. Uh, it all depends on the timing because the, the trains are not dedicated to Princess. Mm -hmm. They are in fact Alaskan Railroad trains and they have their own schedule. And in our case, Princess simply had one observation car tagged on to the end of the train. Yeah. And that was that was ours. The service was impeccable. 
Yeah, I'm just sitting here looking at the uh, Princess Wish book, is what I call it, but the cruise atlas, and I can see on beside your tour uh, the little portion that's dark, a big solid dark line that shows rail, but also on the one above it for P, which is uh, similar to what you did, but uh, they had the train from Fairbanks to Denali, it looks like. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay, that makes sense, okay. So that's good, so take a check at your itinerary, what you're doing. Uh, your next stop was uh, Kenai? Um, am I saying that right? No, Kenai. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. went to Mount McKinley, McKinley first. Oh, the McKinley okay. Princess Lodge, and that was sure. uh, outside of the small town of Talkeetna. Uh, really neat little town, and uh, uh, just, just uh, one of those little tiny towns that you expect to see in Alaska. We were told it actually was the... Um, uh, the motivation or uh, for uh, the TV series Northern Exposure. Mm. But uh, neat little town, and f before going to the lodge, um, we went on a jet boat ride that and was fun. went up the uh, uh, went up the river there, and uh, really really neat. Didn't see much in the way of wildlife, although we did see a few salmon um, jumping out of the water as they were trying to. to swim up the stream to, to spawn. Mm. Anything to add, Barbara? No, nope, it was, it was, that was another day that we got back barely in time to eat, though. This time the restaurant was open, but we barely got back in time to, to be able to use our voucher. So we didn't see much of the McKinley Lodge at all. You know, we got in, we ate, we went to bed, and okay. then we got up and left the next morning for Kenai. Kenai. Kenai was amazing. <laughs> Kenai was so beautiful. Now Kenai is uh, is way south. You actually go through Anchorage, where we were fortunate enough to have have time to meet up with some uh, cruising friends in Anchorage, where we had a wonderful lunch. It was great seeing these folks again. Uh, then we headed on south from Anchorage, and you actually drive mostly on the same road that would lead you down to Whittier, where the where the cruise ships depart. Uh, but we continue kind of south and to the west, uh, along towards Seward, uh, and we we got to the Kenai Lodge, and it was just it was wonderful. It was nestled in the forest, and uh, they were the more or less individual cabins. Uh, they were kind of more like attached homes, but maybe four as a group. Mm -hmm. But they were the, the, but the, every cabin had a fireplace, had a wood burning <laughs> stove, and a little dining table, and I mean, it was just lovely. It was really lovely. I loved yeah. it. I'm going to get some of the pictures that Barb and Craig had, and I'll put it up with this podcast. So if you're watching it on YouTube, you can see it. Uh, and what? So you were there for three nights? Four three nights. nights. Three nights. Yeah. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, with uh, Barb having taken ill. Um, we really didn't do anything, uh, any of the tours from Kenai. We had scheduled a, uh, a tour that, by the way, was not included in the package um, to do a scenic river float. But uh, the weather was kind of bad, and Barb was still recovering, and uh, we just elected to pass on okay. that one. And we stayed uh, stayed in the, in the room, and I kept the, uh, the wood stove burning. going, and it was just, it was really, really nice. A very relaxing thing to do uh, with all the tours and everything else going on. It was, you felt you. It was almost like being on a port intensive cruise, and uh, having those couple of days to just kind of do nothing was uh, exactly what the doctor ordered. It seems like that lodge is everything I imagine when I think of doing Alaska, being up in one of those nice. It was spectacular. Wooded areas, it was spectacular. For us, hot Kenai, tubs had everything. Yeah, Kenai yeah. was clearly uh, our right. favorite of the three of, of the. I guess it's four lodges that we stayed at. And was there anything around the lodge at all? If you needed some no. kind of no, no, it so was, make sure you have what you need when yeah. you're in there. It was isolated. That's correct. Okay. Well, the, fortunately, again, the we had a two-hour stop in Anchorage, and so if you needed anything. That was your opportunity because it stopped in the downtown Anchorage, and there were lots of opportunities to go and, and uh, pick up any needs. But it is important to understand: yes, Kenai is isolated. It's about an hour's drive from any kind of, <laughs> of shopping, and so you just need to be prepared. Okay, okay, that's good to know. And um, then you left Kenai and you went to the ship. Is yep. that it? That's correct. And that's the, it. once again, with the uh, with the package that we got, uh, we put our 
put our bags out at the last morning at uh, Kenai with our uh, ship uh, luggage tags on them, and the next time we saw them was in our cabin. Oh, wow. So it's, it's, it's very nice that you don't have to go through any of the stuff of grabbing your bags and schlepping them uh, onto the ship. We did have to check in, but there was nobody oh, there. They got the, us there yeah. fairly early, and so there was nobody there. It was, in fact, we walked through the preferred line, you know, for elites, and our friends walked through the regular line. They got up there before we did. <laughs> yeah, I think Whittier is the only place I've ever been where it is totally whatever you're used to for embarkation you won't have here because it's because basically time every time a train arrives is when it gets really busy. Right, <laughs> exactly right. So if you see a train arriving, make sure you're on before then. That's but, right. But you guys came via motor coach. So. That's right. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. And did you like the tunnels? Did you go? Oh yeah. It's it's very interesting because the. Uh, the driver uh, of the coach, they they orchestrate it so that your your wait time at the tunnel is minimized. We had probably 10 minutes or less to wait, um, and of course, you know the tunnel is one way, and a certain amount of time allocated to each direction, plus additional time when when the train. Uh, goes through because, of course, it has priority. Mm -hmm. That's pretty and they, they gave buses priority over the cars, so our buses went through first, and they spaced us out. There's a certain amount of space. They say you have to leave between the buses just because of fumes and everything in that tunnel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's a pretty long tunnel. Um, Two and a half miles. Yeah. Jeez, we didn't make it through there. Um, yeah, it would have been kind of neat. Uh, so did you? what kind of wildlife did you see in the seven days that you were up there? Outside of my wife, uh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> we we didn't see all that much. We saw, uh, we saw one uh, one uh, grizzly bear right. uh, that was actually surprisingly close to the uh, to the roadway, uh, just strolling along, uh, you know, pausing to to pull off some berries and and uh, yeah. have a quick snack. We always laugh. We say Princess hired the bear to be. That's there, right. So could, yeah. <laughs> actually, our tour host on the bus told us that he did have a moose costume that Princess did used to put him out on the hillside. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> Practice up. But he says they have retired it. <laughs> They're not doing that anymore. <laughs> but we didn't see any moose, but we did see doll sheep. Doll sheep everywhere. Yeah. On and the hill, right on the, the, the crest of the, of the ridges. Mm -hmm. We didn't see any of them uh, you know, close. very close. Yeah, no, yeah. they're usually really far, yeah. Thanks. Eagles. We saw a number of eagles, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. there wasn't a whole lot else. It was uh, it was fairly quiet. The, mm -hmm. uh, we were towards the tail end of the salmon run, and so the the bears weren't really out. Yeah, they would have been near the sam the the streams, I guess. Playing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I just have a couple things I was going to ask about. Um, you said it was really busy, all those things. So every day you're out doing a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, any tips in regards to when you're planning this about maybe making it so it's not crazy, crazy? Or? I would suggest to do the land tour first and then the cruise. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest suggestion would be put it in that order because you are so busy on the land tour that the cruise was very relaxing. Great tip. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we've had we've had people do it the other way, and you get into the relaxed mode uh, on the on the ship, and then you do the land side, and by the time you get to Fairbanks and you're ready to to catch your plane to fly home, um, you're dragging. Yeah, I so, Yeah, cruise first is is really important. Cruise last. Or cruise last. I'm sorry. <laughs> what am I thinking? The uh, the other thing is I guess is making the decision as to whether you want to do the escorted tour or on one of the own. other tours which are basically on your own. Um, again, if you're, if you're comfortable doing the research and going out and finding your own tour companies and all of that, um, you can save a lot of money by doing it on your own. Um, we, we thoroughly enjoyed letting someone else do the driving if you know what I mean. Letting them do everything. It was great. Yeah, they handled it all, and all we had to do was to ensure we were where we were supposed to be when we were supposed to be. 
Oh, so I'm learning something new. So I can I can see as I'm going through the wish book here that they have Denali Explorer on your own and and these twelve night things. So that's what you're referring to. You yes. do all the transportation and accommodations, but right. then you do everything when you're there. Okay. You do your meals. You do your tours. You do everything. So. Oh. And they have them set up to uh, that you can visit some of the lodges. Uh, you're not required to to do the whole gamut that we did. Um, it just uh, you know it's hit and miss. You you make your uh, you make your choice, mm -hmm. and you get to specify what it is that uh, appeals to you most. Yes, there's plus and minuses on everything. Isn't there? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. But uh, it's just uh, the interior of Alaska is an incredible place, and I think that. Uh, for people like us who had cruised there a number of times, it, it was still a, a truly unique, remarkable experience. Oh, and one thing that we did get that was quite exceptional was the change of colors. Mm -hmm. This time of year, all the trees were changing colors, the shrubs were changing colors, and they say their fall only lasts two to three weeks because, you know, they go straight to winter. But we were there at the perfect time. It was so amazingly gorgeous yeah. and this is just in case people are listening to this really like in the, in the future yeah uh, it's the first week of september second week september 5th yes. you, you started okay yeah okay it was amazing the colors were so beautiful so did your tour guide or your guy that was on the bus with you was he on the ship with you as well no no, okay. no he he says that they uh he seems to have misplaced his boarding tags <laughs> oh yeah, too bad. Yeah. No, he was actually quite anxious because we were his last tour for the season. Oh. He was flying home, so he was excited to be going home. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, what about for those people that need to be uh, connected well with the internet? Is there Wi-Fi at all the places? Each each of lodge has had Wi-Fi service. Uh, McKinley's I, seemed to be a little more spotty. Uh, uh, Keen Eyes. Uh, Perfect. In the room, it was uh, it was. It was very spotty, but to go down to the to the main lodge and it was perfect. Okay, that's good. And it's all free. I mean, it's not like when you're on a ship and you have to buy minutes. Yeah. It's yeah. all just like at any hotel okay. but that has free internet. Well, that, that's good to know. And and how was the weather? Everybody freaks out about Alaska, but how was it? It was you end should, of summer. You should plan to dress warmly because the daytime temperatures uh, were right around 50. Uh, but the first few days were just clear as a bell, uh, sun, then we got, by the time we got to Anchorage and to Kenai, uh, the weather had uh, definitely turned and we, we had rain. Uh, but again, the temperatures were not that, were not that low, probably again, uh, low 50s. And then we boarded in the ship and then okay. as we got, as we went south in the ship, it got colder. Yeah, yeah, that can happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, Barb was saying yesterday how key it was to have layers and just kind of on and off. And Absolutely. so, did you need gloves and scarves? Yes, and, you did. Yeah, we had hats. We had the knit hats. We had the gloves. We had the scarves. Yeah, okay. but we wore t-shirts underneath. You know, not turtlenecks. Turtlenecks would too be too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you did peel. One one of the things uh, is that in many of the tours uh, you were out in the open air, mm -hmm. and uh, when there was a wind blowing, uh, you really needed the extra protection, you know, gloves, uh, et cetera, because of the uh, the cold wind. But it, when you're standing still, for the most part, no, it was it wasn't really that that bad. Oh, good. Um, and I just made a note. Uh, how was um, like if you, you, was there laundry facilities or something? I'm thinking if you're on this for seven days, what did you do with regards to laundry? Each of the lodges actually had, they had uh, laundry facilities for you oh. to use. It was yeah. uh, a... Coin laundry type of thing? Or? Mm -hmm. Yes, they Coin were. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. But it was, uh, it was available and uh, for those that needed it, um, we decided we would hang on and submit Turn it, it all on in the on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. You're on vacation, you want to be doing laundry. So, um, any last words in regards to advice? What would you say to somebody? Because I know of a few people that are doing this tour next year. What advice would you give them? Uh, one from each of you guys. Uh, just to enjoy the beauty around you. It's the, the landscape is so spectacular that you just have to sit back and enjoy it. I, I even put my camera down because I wasn't 
I was looking at it too much through the lens and I needed to see it just with my eyes and it was it's just so spectacular it's it's land that we don't see you know we don't see that kind of beauty it was amazing it was the, yeah. the beauty was just amazing I love that tip because I I fall into that too I always have my face up to the camera and I'm missing out and I go Vicki just put the camera down you know it's not that yeah it's yeah not that important you need to see with your eyes. Okay. What about you, Craig? What would you advice would you give to people? Again, the main thing I would uh, suggest is uh, make the right choice for you in terms of uh, what land tour you select. Uh, the escorted tours are definitely more expensive, but if you're the kind of person that, that wants to have something, uh, a tour that's stress-free, uh, it's really, really nice because you don't have to worry about selecting anything. It's all taken care of. Um, if, on the other hand, the, that uh, stress stuff doesn't bother you, and uh, by all means, you can save a lot of money by going with some of the other options. Yeah. Um, again, the, the choice is yours. Um, of the, again, of the lodges, Kenai was, uh, we thought that was just incredible, and I would encourage you to uh, include that in your, in your tour if at all possible. The only one we missed was Copper River. That's the only other lodge. So we went to four of their five lodges. So next time we'd want to make sure we made it to Copper River just so we could say we've been there too. Mm -hmm. Sounds lovely. Uh, so for everybody, uh, we're going to do it in two different podcasts. We're going to do the land portion and then um, we're going to do another podcast on the seven day southern um, Alaska or southbound trip uh, on the coral. So make sure you come back next week when we do the uh, podcast for that. Uh, thanks for listening um, and uh, stay tuned. Thank you for taking the time out today to listen to my podcast. Uh, if you'd like more information about cruising and where we've been and who we've talked to, check out my Facebook page, Cruising Princess Cruise Lines with Vicki, or check out my blog, Vicki and Bernie Travel.blogspot.ca. Please note that all comments and questions and information here is all just from my own personal experience or those of the people I'm interviewing. We are in no way affiliated with any cruise line or travel agent and we are just avid fans of cruising and we are hoping that perhaps some of our cruising experience can help you. If you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave a comment on the blog and I will try to get back and respond to your questions. Again, thank you for listening.